Gee, this is terrific. I've never been in a podcast studio before. This is this is amazing. You know, my wife, she's a very big fan of you. Oh, God, why can't you just get to the point and leave me alone? Oh, I'll get to the point, sir, but first, I just want to blow some smoke up your ass. <laughs> okay, all right. If you hadn't guessed already, this is the Wild Wisdom Podcast. Hello, I am your pert porter. Uh, and we are talking about <laughs> Colombo, if you haven't guessed already. Lieutenant Colombo. Lieutenant Colombo. We are massive fans LAPD. of Lieutenant Colombo. Um, and the Colombo TV series. Uh, I'm joined by my special guest, Mark, again, and we are here to talk about basically the impact that Colombo had on the whole TV show industry and um, the the, the changes it brought, um, the new sort of angles and all that kind of loveliness. But we want to sort of start at the start, basically, how... um, And we should really just briefly go through... But the, the, the whole history thing. Yes. So, get us started. How did it all get put together? How did it all get put together? Well, first and foremost, it's, there's two writers. <clears throat> there's uh, Richard Levison and William Link. Dick and Bill, as uh, they were known by um, Peter Falk. And they had a, an idea back, I think, even when they were they were at college together, these two writers. And um, they were discussing... Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment and in that story the, the murderer is this kind of rich Russian you know high or member Ugly of high, arc or yeah, something. High, yeah. high society thing and the policeman who's in charge of the case is a very kind of run of the mill worn down policeman his name is Petrovich and um, they basically thought you know the, the, the back and forth banter in the in the book was not really banter I mean, it's quite good literature <laughs> yeah yeah the, 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 the character the way he's described in the book he hasn't got any so much money and this is all he has is his job and the the killer is basically thinks he's quite above him you know and this is a theme that would appear in Colombo later on when once the show sort of got rolling mm. um, but the char- they, they thought he's such a great character so that they inspired them to write a play it's called Prescription Murder and uh, and in this play when they performed it they, they had a quite a big name actor his name was jo- um, Joseph Cotton who was in Citizen Kane mm. and The Third Man and they realised that when they uh, they come to take the bows at the end, the big star who was the murderer sort of got a you know nice round of applause, but the actor who was not a famous actor who was playing Columbo got a huge round of applause and cheers and almost you know an ovation. And the two writers sat there and thought, hang on a minute, I think we might have might have something here. Yeah. But what's all fascinating is you know it wasn't fully formed. It wasn't Columbo as Peter Falk as we know it. Mm. They envisaged. Bing Crosby, you know, famous crooner, singer, you know. Yeah. Um, and Bing Crosby said no. Lee J. Cobb, another great character actor, who was in 12 Angry Men and um, played the detective in The Exorcist, you know, mm. the game with the trench coat. And, oh, Christ, yeah. You remember, he, he turned it down. So, you know, and word had got around that this script was being touted, you know, to, to be this pilot. And, and uh, it, word had gotten to Peter Falk, who said uh, these exact words to William Link, said, I would kill to play that cop. Like Ridge script, it's fantastic. <laughs> but I was absolutely killed to play that cop. So he knew instinctively that this is something he could take that yeah. um, to himself. Because if you think about it, this I can't imagine anyone else playing this character. Yeah, casting directors at the time were obviously just spot on, weren't they? I oh, mean, yeah. they just knew who yeah. would, just fitted the role perfectly. And yeah. So uh, it was Gene Barry then in the TV series that he played, who, who the, played the murderer. murderer. Yeah, he was a psychiatrist. And so they did the pilot, put it out there, and I guess it was very successful. But it was a good few years before they did a second pilot, Ransom for a Dead Man. A little bit, you know, a bit sort of aggressive and shouty. Yeah, that's not obviously what he become. He, he's matured um, to a sort of more oh, subversive, very much, yeah. the, the key and to, dagger type yeah. detective. Yeah, the key to Columbo is he's, he sort of kills you with kindness. He's very, yeah. he's very polite. How did you put it? In, in, in Peter Falk's words, like being interrogated by Columbo was like being pecked to death by a, a duck or something, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like slowly, yeah, slowly being pecked, pecked to death by by a duck. Yeah. 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 He, he he's he's over 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 polite. He calls everyone, you know, all the, the suspects. He calls them sir and ma'am, and you know. He's, but, he, um, but it's like he, it's the fact that he comes over as a complete thick mouth. Oh yeah, that's all exactly. He yeah. he sort of. Let's the the, the murderer's guard is let down, mm. you know, straight away. They're thinking, oh, this guy's investigating. Now I've got nothing to worry about, you know. Mm. 
So it's a very deliberate move of Columbo, and it looks like he's not asking direct questions, but he's observing and he sees everything. But he, of course, it's all hidden amongst this bumbling, almost you know, exterior of innocent questions. And then, but then the famous, just one more thing, he'll he'll hit them with a nail, you know. Yeah, and it's usually like it's 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 kind of like a passive aggressive statement almost. Yeah. It's where he sort of goes, yeah. Oh, and by the way I know about this yeah. or, or you know, I know you did it. In or fact, whatever. yeah, he's almost letting the suspect know that he's onto them you know, <coughs> and he always leaves them sort of lingering and so, you know, when the he he exits uh, the door, you know, it sort of cuts the, the suspect in the murderer's face and they're like mm. Yeah, gulp and he's, like, <laughs> I'm, he's gonna have a sleepless night, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But so that okay, so in there was a thing called the NBC Mystery Movie Wheel series. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so let's, let's briefly go over that. So brief, that basically, in order to get the show going, they um, had this uh, a, a rotating reel of shows, and this would basically would consist of five or six episodes per series. And in those days in America, you know, you had about twenty episodes or more of a series, so that would have been a lot of content, a lot of writing, and Peter Falk who plays Colombo didn't want to commit full time to a series but he relented when they said it would only be five or six episodes because the first the other thing we should mention is the um, format the show's format it's a police crime show where you see who the murderer is within the first couple of minutes well it, it shows you how he does it yeah it's, how they do it yeah. where they do it uh, and who does it um, the reverse of other sort of police shows where you sort of like, who the killer is you know the opposite of Agatha Christie and Pryro, where you sort of gather everyone up and slowly reveal who the murderer is. You see who the murderer is mm. um, straight away. And that was a switch. Yeah. As a, up until that point, you know, we, the public were just used to the mystery. Yeah, it's great. You took, it. you took the genre and turned it upside down. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't a whodunit. It was more of a how is he going to catch them type thing. And it was usually something um, the audience would have missed. You know, it's the tiniest little clue or detail that he would... Or, you know that he basically uses cleverness and yeah. intelligence, and and found something that no one else admit had, had missed. And this is what was different. And yeah, particularly that first series. There's there's, a, there's some genius things. One, one of our favourite ones we talked about was uh, involving fingerprints and gloves. Yeah, um, suitable for framing. Yeah, I it. think would be the first episode I'd I'd highlight here in this season because it the guy. Um, I don't know who, who the actor is, but the the, the murderer is, is uh, just yeah, the absolutely art, the art fantastic. Critic, yeah. yeah, he's an art critic, and and they they span uh, uh, you know multiple decades. You know, the yeah. first season was seventy one, yeah. and then it you know it goes all the way up to um, well, there's like there's the ninety. Yeah, it goes into the 90s into the 2000s. 2003 is yeah. when it, it starts. So it's yeah. like, you know, you get like this whole span. <laughs> yeah. You know, the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. Oh, yeah, it's in almost America. 30 years worth of, of show, but where there's only like 69 episodes in total. So, I mean, it's pretty good going. The, the, the lessness of the episodes means that they were able to really push the content and how good the actual shows were. And another interesting thing, it was. The fact that it wasn't like an, another cop show in the sense that there's no car chases or, or gunfights or, or you know anything like that. It was yeah, all, no real action scenes. No action. It's mainly all, all talking, and they and they just follow a certain formula in the sense that you know he the Columbo would turn up after you know the first ten minutes and stumble into the crime scene and look at the body and mm. um, you know he usually just be like woken up getting out of bed or be up all night from the night before from another case and you know because some of them would overlap yeah and um you know so you wouldn't think oh well he's not quite you know got it yet but he has he's obviously worked it out and then like it's the fun in watching is yeah trying to work it out and, yeah uh you know and for me the, the uh, that's why i love it is is it's just that it the way he just sort of works it out and you know he's going to get there because his mind is so sharp and it's like you, he, he knows within the first few seconds who yeah. did it. Yeah, he knows, yeah. You know, just <laughs> just by the way they're acting, yeah. it's just like, no, that's not right, so I'm going to home in on him and then literally within hours, he, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, you do it. Mean, it's usually the guest star who's, who's, the, who's the murderer. I mean, if he knew who the actors were, then he'd probably say, oh, look, it's this week it's Leonard Nimoy, he must be mm. the murderer. Yeah, well, yeah he, <laughs> he must be the one. 
But so, what is it for you that you know you adore about Columbo? I think it's again because it's different, and he's a different character. He's a very um, passive guy. He, he he doesn't use scare tactics or anything. He, he he's uh, as you said before. You know, he, he's like like being pecked to death by a duck. He's mm. he's harmless enough, um, but his tenacity and his determination, I think, is what is it. And he's on his own as well. He's not partnered with. You know, a buddy, someone to bounce yeah, off. Yeah, he, he know, doesn't have a bumbling idiot. No, you know. they they did try. I think one of the series, and he had the guy with the curly hair. And, um, oh, him, yeah. Thing, and they and they tried to have him. He was like a sort of over enthusiastic assistant, but he wasn't quite. He was very insistent. People thought that he's a lone wolf, Columbo, and yeah. um, and the compromise they had was that he'd have a dog occasionally, and the dog was like a very sort of sad looking basset hound, you know. So it was, you know. Suited him. Yeah, he suited the character, you know. And uh, and a wife who you never see, um, mm. but is constantly referred to, uh, Mrs. Columbo. Um, um, well, we we might not touch on the Miss Columbo TV show at the end. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> well, that that was <laughs> that wasn't anything to do with the um, writers. That was yeah. that was something completely different. Dastardly. Yeah. Okay, so it starts off as this kind of as we already mentioned. We we know who the murderer is. We know how he did it. Now the 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 joy is in watching Columbo work it out and the way he manipulates and just constantly badges them yeah. and he says oh it'll only take a minute sir yeah. and then you know just a minute in. of your time and then he starts going on how his wife likes jam yeah or you know something like that and then the guys just oh yeah like, he'll, he'll exasperate the murderers you know he'll, he'll wind he'll push them as far as he can go while, while appearing as politely yeah. as, as possible yeah, yeah like you yeah. say he's quite passive aggressive so it's like he takes every liberty he can to just wind them up yeah and the beauty of these episodes comes in the variety of villains yeah uh you know the leonard nimoy one oh um, that's, that's one of the darkest ones yeah i mean he's he's out now proper psychopath it's, uh, it's really one. good it's, yeah it's, it's a world away from spock and, yeah um, yeah it's, it's a big, and that's an almost he almost doesn't get him at the end it's only the very last second he where he realises something. He, he tweaks something. You mm. know, he's already exited, and, he, and kind of he's like smiling, thinking, "Oh well, I've got away with it." And of course, he hasn't. Um, but then, what happened as the seasons went on? We started getting regular villains, so the, the um, certain actors would oh, come yes. back yeah, and, really. and, and play a different character. Yeah, there's a few. There's a very big handful of them, and they're, and they're very interesting. Um, or great actors. I mean, the first one being Robert Cole. I think he did three. He he was good. He was quite an intense. Um, he was good. Yeah, actor, no, he, you know, he was in Nice Spy. He played the, the you know, like the, the tennis player mm. slash spy. Um, I think, and he he was he was terrific. And then you had um, a guy like Jack Cassidy. You know, Jack Cassidy. Yeah, he's great. He he did three. Uh, um, Patrick McGowan. Patrick McGowan is, is is he's he's the winner with four. I think he did four. He acted four episodes. He also directed quite a lot of them. William Shatner. William Shatner did. Yeah, he did two. Robert Vaughan, man from all, he did two. But there's so many other actors that uh, you know, so many other popular actors. Oh yeah, yeah, they they had great actors. I mean, they, that's what they were. They were actual proper actors, and they they occasionally have a, a, a stunt uh, casting like so as Johnny Cash, you know, who's mm. this, um, who obviously wasn't an actor, but yeah, I think he gave a terrific. Oh, that was brilliant. You know, that, was, that, that was a really good one. That was a, you're almost sympathetic with the murderer in that one. <laughs> I mean, you know, his wife was, was yeah, <laughs> really annoying. There's 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 a couple of episodes where the murderer gets away. Oh yeah, the, the, um, yeah. There's very two rare ones where where Columbo, which we will we will touch off on. Yeah. But like, there's there's so many um, there's so many actors that came. In. I mean, like Billy Connolly came in, mm. did an episode. Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah. Uh, yeah, Rip Torn, Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen, yeah, he was a, he was a murder victim, yeah. Um, and even Julie Newmar, for fuck's sake. Yeah, the Catwoman. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's like there's so much, there's yeah. so many Jackie Cooper. The, the, George Hammond, he did too, as well, I just remembered. George Hammond? Yeah, George. He, he was good. Old son, man with the suntan. <laughs> Sam was like, he was famous for a suntan. Vincent Price, Vincent Twice. But yeah, he yeah he, he would have played a good um, murderer actually. He, he was mm. in it as a supporting role. He, um, he, I think he would have been a terrific. I mean, imagine you know with his very particular way of talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> weird. A lieutenant. Yeah. Yeah. He would have been good. No, there's been some terrific actors, you know, and I think that's part of the appeal of the show. Obviously, is you know you, you get to see these 
axis. So you know the, f the format going in that it's always, you know who Colombo is, but who's he going to be up against? Mm. And as you mentioned, you know, there's, there's a couple of times where the, he doesn't always arrest the murderer, or he, or he does know who's done it, but he kind of lets him go. Yeah, the, the, um, the first one is Forgotten Lady, where... Uh, yeah, it's uh, Janet Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis's mum. It's deliciously it. tragic, this yes, episode. Yes, very, 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 very yeah. good twist uh, that, that she's, she's suffering from um, brain disease that is killing her. It's, like, it's almost like dementia, almost, but she's, she's, yeah. she, she hasn't got long to live, so he decides you know, to kind of... Give her a break, yeah, really. Yeah, she's not going to go... There is another one. I don't remember what the episode is called, um, but he lets her go um, because she was in love with someone, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> But it, you know, there's, 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 you have to give us a break. There's 69 episodes, and yeah, you're still we, going through them. All. You know, yeah. favorite episode of Columbo? What would you say? Oh, uh, there's. Uh, I know there's a lot, but there's a lot. No, but the, the, there's a handful. You're quite right, and I think the best episodes are usually the ones with the best endings because it's all about catching the, the killer. And I think that's where the, um, for me, that's where the appeal lies. It's like you want to see these people get their comeuppance. And I think that um, the, the the best episodes, you, I think it's around the early series as well. First one we mentioned the um, the gloves and the fingerprints. I think that's such a brilliant episode. Suitable for framing. Suitable for framing. Thank you. Yeah. And, Edna, uh, how could you? How dare you? Um, that was a great one. And I th also another favourite of mine is the the Spock one. I think that's a great episode because it's also one of the episodes where Columbo actually loses his rag. You know, he loses oh his. Oh God! Call. Yes. There's, yes. There's, there's, there's about four often. or five instances throughout thirty years where he's lost his call. And but this was the strongest. This is one the strongest one. He, he, yeah. he, he slams a thermos or something on the desk, and it's like some paperweight or yeah, something. Yeah. And, he, and he and he basically says, "I know you've done it, and I'm gonna." So, you know, I'm going to catch you, basically. You know? Yeah. And um, that that was a that. So I think that's a great one. Um, Short fuse. <laughs> definitely not that one. No, no, that might be he your does, one. It's not mine. He does it's, like it. Uh, no, it's, it's Roddy McDowell, and it's um. This smuggling and banana. He's too customs. annoying. He's too annoying. I can't. I can't deal with it. That was a good one. The the uh, one of Cassidy ones because Cassidy did three. And in fact, the first one he was in the very first episode, which was Murder by the Book, which That's was directed it. by a guy, a new guy, no one heard of, called Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and um, <laughs> was that was that Spielberg's first directing he, thing? No, he'd done a couple of TV things, but this is the first thing where people sort of took notice. I think. Okay, and that led to him. He did another TV movie called Duel, you know, with the car being harassed by a truck. Okay. And then he got another film on the back of that, and then on the back of that he got Jaws, and then the rest is you know, history. Um, so, yeah, Jack Cassidy did Murder by the Book, and he did a great one called Publish or Perish, which is a very different uh, setup because he's not actually a murderer. He's, he pays someone to do commit the murder mm. um, and subsequently murders him. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> he has an alibi set up that he's saying he was elsewhere drunk in a bar and while the murder was being committed, so Colombo sort of can't. Uh, pin it on him. That was a good one. I liked the other Jack Cassidy one where he plays the magician. I think yes, that's my favourite like, Jack Cassidy one. I know you like one. that one. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that too. I think it's great. The great Santini. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He was. Um, no, he was good. He was a good foil to because he was always very dapper, very smart. Um, whereas Columbo is always, you know, looks like he's just woken up and slept he his wore, clothes. He wore his tash really well. I yeah, think. he had a great, great tash. Just yeah, it was superb that yeah, tash. I loved it. Was, it. It was a good tash. Um, uh, Dick Van Dyke was. Uh, oh yeah, that was. He, a, he that was, was in that with the, good, the uh, photographer. Negative reaction. Yeah, neg yeah. He was. Um, no, no. I think that was. Uh, he might be. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's it's in the fourth season. It's yeah. He he was good um, because it's Dick Van Dyke. You know, it's, it's Mr. Mary Poppins and things, and, and it's um, again a great ending where. You think he's not quite going to catch him, and he basically incriminates himself. <laughs> Is that the, I, I I love that. If he just stayed quiet and walked out, yeah, he, he could have just gone not away. say anything yeah, exactly. But he basically <laughs> framed himself. And now there's there's one more. Um, there's one with his, his police commissioner, um, Ripton, called a friend indeed. Um, it's not Ripton, but it's, Isn't it's it? Richard Kiley. His oh, name okay. Is, so and he's looks like um, a, a proper stage actor. He he was famous for doing. Um, uh, Don Quixote on stage, you know, he had this sort of great, sort of booming voice, you know. A lot of these um, guys come from the the boards, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, you know. I mean, not yeah, George Hamilton, you know, but he's uh, part of the studio system. But yeah, I mean, it's suntan. 
we we by dawn's early light was a good one that was a McGovern that's a, yeah that's his first one um and he's, really good. He's, and he's probably his most least quirky i think it's he's actually playing he a character. Played it quite seriously it yeah he's really, aged, you know. aged up to look quite old with his white hair and makeup to make him look older and um i think he won an emmy for it as well he's, he's quite um i want them all lined up out there yeah he, Do you hear about he's very good at playing these sort of stern um clenched buttock types you know yeah <laughs> he's very good in it but but i think he's he got to be very good friends with folk in real life mm. and um that's why he sort of had the most episodes I, 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 I love the way he lingers on syllables did you count them <laughs> yeah. and he's got a beautiful way of speaking yeah he's got absolutely a very great clip way of um over emphasizing every word <laughs> uh, i'm a big fan of him from the prisoner which is one of my favourite TV shows, and, he, and again, he he would he take certain words, he'd speak very low, yeah, and then would speak quite high occasionally. Um, we will talk about the prisoner in a future podcast episode. We may uh, do, yeah, because uh, yeah. uh, yeah. um, that is actually a, a very special series. Yes. Uh, so, we, who's we, this guy? That's, I oh, that that's guy. Ricardo Montalban, who played Khan in Star Trek: The Wrath of Khan. Okay, yeah, yeah, his, his one was good. I, I like his character. Yeah, it wasn't the strongest episode, but he, he's, he's a good enough uh, actor. As an actor. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I, I like him. Absolutely. And um, the Shatner one, where he's the... Um, he's a, he plays a TV detective, funnily enough. He's almost like a a, a TV version of... Or not Columbo, he's a bit quite a dandy, isn't he? Mm -hmm. he fancies him, and he fancies himself as a murderer and, a, you know, as well as a TV detective. And... Um, Foolishly thinking he can get away with get away with it, yeah, and it, that's quite a good ending as well because he's. The, what was interesting about that episode was he slips in and out of character. One minute he's the actor, and then he's the detective, mm -hmm. and he tells Columbo which one he is when he's speaking. It's um, I thought so that was a bit bizarre. The ending was good. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like he suddenly changes. Go. Oh, damn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's always how the show ends. <laughs> you know, you uh, forgot to clean. You remember to clean the gun, but you forgot to clean the bullets. <laughs> The, we could the, honestly we could go on about our you know because the, there are so many good yeah. episodes uh, along the, the series' way and stuff and good actors um, and Did amazing actors Dan? yeah um, that's the murder under glass murder under glass with yeah. the, the the poison the and the yeah the poison the, wine yeah yeah and the Japanese fish uh, lieutenant I had wished you were a cook <laughs> Yeah, I love another it, great vocalist. another great way he had a great way of talking as well you know he's a, he's a, he's a elegant frenchman um and then um, another one of my favorites i have to admit is murder smoke and shadows yeah you go to the more later series aren't you the the, the revival well i mean i like i like episodes from every season but i i just love the actor who plays the murderer in this one i don't know what i've forgotten what his name is but which one the, the english guy um Oh him! He oh yeah, that, Johnny, that guy. Uh, the, you know he was in oh, Johnny, Johnny Five. Five. Oh yeah, he was the guy. Um, Johnny Five is alive. He was in Hackers as well, I yes. think. Yes, another guy. Uh, that was a good one. The woman who tries to rest in peace, Mrs. Columbo. She I, tries to poison Columbo. I think this actress is absolutely amazing. Mm. She blew me away. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, she did because it, it was the way that she just approached the character and she was just like she would always just be in tears and shit it yeah. was just like oh, just a really troubled person anyway she, she gave it everything and then the nun that was a great uh, observation episode uh, he's been up all night you know he slept at the or not even slept he's just sort of un hasn't shaved hair all over the place and he goes to a soup kitchen to look for um, you know a witness yeah and um, the nun sees him walk in and she's like oh you poor poor man you know, oh, that terrible coat you're wearing, that, <laughs> yeah. the, the terrible raincoat, because uh, you know, that was his signature move. In fact, he wore the same coat throughout the, the whole run of the show. There was no duplicates or anything. It was was all, it literally the same coat? It was the same raincoat, yeah. Oh, right. he, he, bought, he bought it in um, New York. He said he was, like, ten years before he, the show even started, he said he was out in New York, and, you know, he was, I, I don't know, but he started raining, and he didn't have a brolly and everything, so he just pops into the... Mm. Uh, Bloomingdale's or it was bought, just bought one off the peg and he goes oh I like the feel of this it feels good and then you know he's in his wardrobe so when he got the part of Columbo he said you know I think I got the perfect coat for this because one of the things when I was a kid and you see him wearing the company you think he's in Los Angeles which is always very quite balmy weather very always sunshine yeah. you know, hardly any rain you, you know why would you wear a raincoat all the time yeah 
And it's, um, I always thought that was quite funny as a kid, <laughs> see him wearing his raincoat in this kind of hot, hot weather. And, and there's an episode where he does leave America for um, London, yeah. the special London thing. And of course, it's stereotype, it's London, it's always raining, and he gets perfect use out of his coat. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just the rain, you can see it bouncing off it. it I mean, overall, I think the impact that Colombo had was huge because it, it, it basically sort of brought in the idea that you don't have to sort of stick to a formula you can you know try things from a different angle see how it works um, yeah they did uh, shake it it was, it was a good episode where um, instead of seeing um, you see who the murderer is at the start um, and then Columbo comes in and of course they're twin brothers mm. so you don't know so you don't know who's done it you know one of them's done it but you don't know which one right um, Martin Landau played the um, was it, that was the only one they really sort of brought in a mystery to it was there no, other there was, ones no there was a terrible one it's probably, probably the worst episode and it's directed by him okay um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, it's called um, Last Salute to the Commodore and, oh my god and it is awful it's basically they decided it's the end it's the last episode of the season and they said let's do the opposite of what we normally do so they have Columbo playing played rather essentially by Peter Falk he's a bit bizarre in it like he's on drugs or something yeah and, oh my god um, thing. and he again it's a bit like more like a traditional show where he gathers everyone in the room at the end to say who the murderer is and, but there's no big reveal I'm still confused as to how the murderer is I, I, I don't get it I, I literally didn't get that episode no it's because bit, you didn't I didn't hear about how bad this episode was <laughs> until after I watched it so <laughs> I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm settling down for a nice, you know, fresh episode of Columbo I haven't yeah. seen before. Yeah, you it must know, have caught you off guard then, because uh, uh, they do have, a, like you say, they had a formula and they would, you know, add little things to it. This one completely throws it out of the, out of the window. Oh, it was just so surprising. And, and it's very surreal, and it's got Robert Vaughan in it, and you think, oh great, he must be the murderer, and then he's killed off. Yeah. That's probably the only interesting thing in it that, that he's killed off halfway through. So you think, oh, well, if he's not him, then who is the? Isn't there something killer. to do with the sock at the end? No, it's to do with the old You find something in watch. a sock. No, it's a watch. Like it's, it's the, the Commodore's watch. Right. You know? and, uh, oh, God. And, it, and, it, and it's not even clever enough as it sounds, you know. It's just, it's just dreadful. I, I felt like I had taken drugs. It, it, it's the mo- if you've ever never taken drugs, and I'm not advocating it. That's drugs, what it's like. But, but, but if you want to know what it's, it's like <laughs> to take drugs, just watch the episode. You don't have to take anything. Watch that. Just watch the episode, yeah. and then you'll get it. And, um, so uh, you know, Peter Falk got you know typecasted really. He, he but did, I don't yeah. think he minded, did he? I, I think at the end he was like, oh whatever. Yeah, I money. think before Columbo, he was well respected actor, and he mm. he he done quite a few films. Been nominated for two Oscars, by the way. Before, oh, right, before okay. Columbo, yeah, he was he was a proper actor, right. and um, and then he did a lot of films with John Cassavetes, right. who was independent filmmaker. Um, he had a very distinct style, and and, and between him and another, another guy, Ben Gazzara, who incidentally directed one of my favourite episodes, you know, with the corrupt police commissioner, he directed that. Okay. And um, and the one on the ship, uh, he directed that one. You know, when Columbo was on a cruise and. Uh, Vaguely, yeah, he, and Robert Vaughan's on the ship, and then he, he's the killer. And um, okay, um, yeah, Patrick McNee is the captain. Oh, god, him, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> old uh, what's his name, Steed, yeah, yeah, Sir Godfrey Tibbet. Come, let me show you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, <clears throat> I, I tell you what, man, there's a whole plethora of such. Brilliantly beautiful actors. We don't give them enough credit. No, I don't think many of them are alive are alive anymore. But no, um, majority of them are, are not no longer with us. Yeah, I mean, I respect and hats off to every single person that starred in in these in these series because it is it, it's as precious to me as Quantum Leap is, and I, we're going to do something on Quantum Leap at some point anyway as well. So yeah, I mean, we, we we're doing this one because it, we we're sort of just talking about. T- TV shows in general, and we, mm. we, we both um, very much admire and respect this show. And I think, I mean, TV shows today, it's all just flash and dazzle and, and you know, tinsel, 
type shit. And this is the complete this, opposite, isn't it? I mean, this this comes from a time where it's about the art of the dialogue. You know, the art yeah. of the, the uh, as Agatha Christie would put it, the, the the thrill being in the chase, and you you're you, you're loving yeah. how it all works out. It's not necessarily about the capture. Uh, and it, it, the the art of the flow of these kind of things is really really hard to do. So I really you know you don't see much of that anymore. Yeah. So I I, I love it as well because it's the the it's also the era that it was made. It was the perfect era, the, the beginning of the nineteen seventies, which was you know after the sort of uh, the sixties and the Beatles and mm. and then you know Summer of Love, all these sort of bright colours and everything. Everything sort of dialed down. And I think Columbo kind of represents that because he's got the the beige mac and the uh, brown suit and the brown shoes. Everything's kind of bland and stuff, and all the sort of seventies colours, the oranges and browns and yellows mm. and things. It's, it's it, everything's sort of down. And then at the time, the world was different, you know, with Vietnam and Nixon as the president. Everything was just a little bit dodgy anyway, you know. That that, that sort of time. The, the Cold War was it? Was yeah, the it? Cold War was still going. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and Russia and and. and the, the, that era basically it's, it felt right for uh, Colombo he come along at the right time I think um, and which, which kind of showed that you know the, it's also what I love about it is the it's the little guy getting one over on the big guy you know yeah. um, the underdog you know and that, that's always a, a very prudent formula you know like with films like Rocky and things where, where you think oh he's got no chance but he, he sort of goes up anyway and, and and has a go, and I think Columbo represents that. He's he's always these smug, rich, rich types mm. inevitably would be taken down by this guy who smokes these cheap cigars and wears the same clothes all the time and drives a really shit car. Yeah, and like, um, and I think who? people always got a big kick out of that. They love seeing the last ten minutes of the show and seeing him, you know, taking someone down with something absolutely fantastically clever as well that that, that we as the audience would not have mm. uh, seen. You know, and it's only afterwards you go, oh, yeah. And he's no saint, though, by any means, Columbo. I mean, he's nicked, <laughs> he's he's nicked some shit as well during during his time, and he's 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 helped himself to uh, yeah, a whole bunch of mints one time. And then yeah, he, he's yeah. I mean, he's not like a now and out thief. No, but no, he's, I know, but he, like he, he does um, get a bit cheeky sometimes. Yeah, the, the, there's a series goes on. There's little quirks the character has, and I think they're also the same quirks of Peter Falk that they they put in there, and mm. and the stuff like with food. He's quite a foodie, you know, or love, or you know, free food. Well, he's basically. Italian, isn't he? so. Well, that's the great thing. He, 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 the character's Italian, but Peter Falk's not Italian. He's mm. he's got like his family's like Russian Jewish something, but he everyone thought he was Italian, so he ran with the Italian um, thing, and they put the and he put little Italian phrases into the character. Um, but but yeah, when it comes to free food, the um, you know he'll go out of his way, go, oh this, this is, can I try this? This is. This is terrific. How You've do you make... try this cheese? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this pasta really fills you up. And it's really like, you know, little quirks like that. The, the food was one of them. Well, it's, it's, it's cigars, really. He'd always be chewing on the end of a cigar or he'd always be looking to light up a cigar. And it was it was during the, you know, the time when smoking was, I think, it, it, well, oh, it started yeah. off as being very accepted, but then it sort of grew into, no, you can't smoke in here. Yeah. And as the... You know, the series goes on. You start. Yeah, cigar that. was a great prop because I think primarily he was a, a quite heavy cigarette smoker, and and, and would only smoke cigars for Colombo because he said that was suit Colombo more. He'd be more of a. I think mm. It's a great prop because as he's um, gesturing, you know, he's, he's he's waving this cigar around, and it's great as well because you go into these big houses with nice things, and you think, oh god, he's going to pull these cigar ashes all over these nice carpets and things. Mm. You know, it's it's a nice little um, character moment. And there's one thing I do want to mention about um, him as an actor as well. I think the fact that um, I, I don't know whether you'd call him cross-eyed or whether he's, he's got like a dead eye. Yeah, he had a glass eye. glass eye. Yeah. That the fact that his, he has a glass eye, and the fact that he's playing a detective who likes to play the fool. You know he likes to play the fool, but you know he's secretly a way more intelligent than any of these murderers. The fact that he has a glass eye lends to that so well because mm. you don't know where he's looking, yeah. <laughs> right? And you don't always because you forget which is the glass eye. So are you looking down there? Are you looking up here? But I, I just think that's on a, on a very on a very subtle level that lends to the the the, the yeah as, as to his um, standoffish look that he perhaps sometimes you know I mean it, it, he's you know oh god it, 
it's just a great series, and I'm glad that I discovered it, actually. Yeah, the reason they they endure, I think, is because they, they're still good, you know? I think if it's not going to last unless it's any good. A good, like a good film or a good album you listen to, you know, if it's been like, if it's over 20 years or 30 years, and you, you listen or watch it again, it's it's going to be, um, if it still resonates with you, or, or you think, God, that's really, you know, surprised me, you know, if it's that good, it, um, then it will last. Mm. And I think a lot of these shows, not every episode, of course, you know, it's like... No, not everyone. Um, like when we were talking about with the Bonds, you know, not... not and it's not going to score every time, but I think, it, you know, the, the the really good episode, the main bulk of it, and people remember it as as being good, is because it was primarily good. I think the fact that it, it's it, it's like if you treat it as a play, yeah, then because that, that must have been how they did it, because the the art of the the you know two humans communicating, yeah. and you've got like every scene has to have a conflict. I, I just I just think that it kind of feels like it could be a play every single episode, you know. Yeah. And I think that if you if you treat it like that, then the whole slow pace nature of each episode, and then you get the result at the end. You get what you're looking for. That little bit of an adrenaline rush when he's, you know, because you're with the murderer in in some cases, aren't you? It's like they're you're good almost, enough actor, yeah. Yeah, you're almost on his side. It's yeah. like, oh damn, you yeah, tried. But, but then at the same time, you do want to see Columbo take him yeah. down. And I think you're right. You actually nailed it. They are like a play because originally it was a play. Mm. They they wrote Prescription Murder, and um, I think that's why it works. That's why it works. If you, if you take it on that level, um, mm. you know, it's the old-fashioned way of entertaining an audience in the theatre, and it's the same on on television. Yeah, and then you know, you know, all these classy elements of talent and determination and good writing, production, you know, and it all just comes comes together. And I think the main thing that holds it together is Peter Falk. Now I know people have talked about someone like Mark Ruffalo or something taking it on. Don't you fucking um, dare! Thing, and I don't think they would. I think it's because he looked. He did a film called Zodiac where he played the inspector in that. Mm. With 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 the, you got to remember, Columbo was all pre DNA. Um, you know, technology, you know, how they catch crime. He was an old fashioned um, detective in that sense. He didn't have the technology that's available mm. today where you could probably catch someone a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, they were just barely starting to get used to fingerprints yeah, and shit exactly. and, and, and take, lifting fingerprints off certain materials. I, and think. I think in one of the early series, the, 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 he can't prove that the murderer made a phone call from another number. They didn't have that technology or something. They oh, God, yeah. I think so. So that's all. Yeah, change somewhat. So that's the other reason. If they, I mean, if they were, if they had to do it, then obviously you'd have to set it in the early seventies. You know? Yeah, you'd have to. You um, couldn't. You you couldn't do a modern day Columbo no. who d who relies on his wits. Yeah, I yeah. Th I just don't think it would work unless yeah. they. It, 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 the reason why it worked back then is because it's a different world. It was a different world. Yeah. Um, and I'm so glad they shot it on film as well, rather than yeah. actual just oh, TV makes such cams. A difference because because. You know, they clean all these things up. The 35 mil, we all look absolutely brand new when they, when they, um, I'm sure they will go through and. I mean, you've got no hope of trying to remaster TV camera based stuff. No. They tried it with Faulty Towers, didn't really work out that no, well, but no. if you shot it in film, obviously, you've got the negative, so yeah. that's going to be like, woo, awesome. Yeah, that's good. No, I, so I, I hope it, uh, I hope they do that to them all because they, uh, they deserve it. They do deserve it. You know. I mean, what else is there really to say about this series? It, if you haven't seen this series, please, 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 just just watch the pilot, or even just pick one out of the out of the, the the plenty of series that there are. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I recommend anyone from the nineteen seventies, you know, with the yeah. exception of Last Salute to the Commodore. Yeah, leave yeah. Last Salute to the Commodore alone. <laughs> Never touch that. Trust us. Just trust yeah. us. Don't touch it. Um, right, that's going to do it for this time. Um, thank you for joining me. It was a very lush discussion. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. It's very, very delightful. Um, until the next time, I will see you later. So take care, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, dear. Yeah, we stumbled a bit there. How long was that? Oh, God.